You are listening to the Shopify Solutions Podcast, a podcast for Shopify store owners that brings you concrete examples on how to build and grow your e-commerce business. My name is Scott Austin, and I have an e-commerce agency named Jade Puma. In this podcast, I'll share my e-commerce insights and best practices with you. Hey, Scott Austin here. In this episode, I'm going to cover AI for image generation. Now, as we're going to be talking about images and image generation, I'm going to have an accompanying video for this podcast. So if you're listening to the audio version of this, you can later on check out the video version and see the images that we're creating in AI. Now, for those of you that are counting, this is the third episode I've done on AI in the past year. And that's because I'm a big believer in content creation for building e-commerce brands. And I think that AI is a very valuable tool that every store owner should be thinking about adding to their content creation strategies. And in the past month, there's been some significant improvements in graphic and image generation from AI. And I'm going to cover two of the tools that I use to do AI generated images. The first one is Dolly 3, which is from OpenAI, the same people that bring us ChatGPT. And you can now use ChatGPT to create specifications for Dolly 3 to use to generate images. And it makes image generation even easier than just using an image generation alone, but having a chat tool that's an interface for you. And the other tool we're gonna talk about is Adobe Photoshop and how they've added their own AI tools into the Adobe suite that you can use throughout your graphics. And even though these tools just came out within the past month, both the ChatGPT one and the Adobe ones, I'm now using them almost daily at my agency. Now these tools don't give me everything I need from content generation. You still have to create your own graphics and photos when your requirements exceed what can be done through AI. But AI can do a lot of the lifting for a lot of your needs. So now I'm gonna do a show and tell of each of these tools just so you get an idea of what is possible and some of the steps that you can take or best practices to get the most out of what's available. Now, the first tool we're gonna to talk about is ChatGPT and Dolly 3. They're both from the same company, OpenAI. And now, if you're on the pro plan of ChatGPT, which is $20 a month, you have access to the Dolly 3 interface. And I've got that on my screen right now. Now, I've already gone through and run through some image generation scenarios ahead of time. And that's because when you create an image with ChatGPT, it'll take some time, maybe up to a minute every time to do another rev on your image creation. And there's also a cap on the number of images you can create at any given time. So I did all of this ahead of time so we don't run into the caps and we don't have those pauses in image generation. So the first image I wanted to create was just a graphic. And the graphic is actually for this podcast episode. All right, so the instructions I said was, give me a vector graphic to use as a cover for a podcast episode about generating images for your e-commerce store using AI. And every time you can chat GPT an image query, it gives you four images that you can choose from. And all, all four of these images, you know, I asked for a graphic. So it, they kind of look like they were made in Illustrator or the vector tool. They're not photorealistic. Um, and the first one it gave me is the one I like the most. It's actually of a robot add an easel with a painting and a whole bunch of graphics around it to make you think about, you know, photo creation, image creation, e-commerce, and that kind of stuff. Second image it gave me was a shopping cart because we did talk about e-commerce. There's AI in there because we asked about AI. And what ChatGPT is doing as you scroll through these different images it renders, what it's doing is it takes the small prompt I gave it and expands that into four different prompts. So ChatGPT is adding its own intelligence to this and giving more nuance to Dolly 3 on what to create. And that's how you can come up with four different graphics from one query, because ChatGPT is interpreting it four different ways. Third one I didn't like, it, it just wasn't, it was confusing to me. It's like of a cityscape and, and clouds and rain. I just, it didn't make sense to me, but you know, that's okay. And then the last one definitely looks very e-commerce. Um, although it doesn't really sell you to me image creation or AI as much. But with the four of them, I could look at them and say, well, I like this or that about them and then iterate on that. 
So for my second query, what I wanted to do was get the images to be more along my brand colors. So I have a green, blue, and yellow brand color. So what I did is I updated the instructions with update these so that the primary color is, and I gave a hex code for green, an additional color is for, and I gave a hex code for blue, and a hex code for yellow or gold. And what it gave me didn't listen to those instructions at all. So it just doesn't understand the concept of hex codes. So I got four new images, kind of similar to the ones I had before, um, but a little bit different because every time you iterate on it, it's just going to give you a new run. But it didn't incorporate the colors I was looking for. So then what I did for my third query is I said, make the primary colors of the graphics jade green. And each one of the four graphics is predominantly green, but they're not the same shade of green. So you can give it instructions and it can choose to listen to it or not listen to it. And sometimes it's kind of interesting on what works and what doesn't. But now I've got four images. The first one of the robot painting again. And the second one is like this mind hive type of thing. It's also in green. The third one still has that city skyline with clouds and rain that makes no sense, but it's also green. And the last one has, you know, green on the very e-commerce looking uh, image of a monitor. And sometimes AI really messes up on the text, right? On this, on this one I'm looking at now, it says AI enhanced e-commerce, but the H has three vertical parts instead of two. And commerce is like, instead of two M's, it's an M, N, and an N, and two E's. So it's, it's kind of wacky. But it's a lot better than it used to be in AI generated images where most of the time the text is making a lot more sense than it used to. So now I've got these four mainly green images and that's more along my brand. So the next thing I did is because it gave me square images and I want to use this as the blog header on my website for this podcast episode. And my blog images are all four to three aspect ratio. So I said, provide the image in a four to three, you know, four colon three aspect ratio. And I tried to do this before. I now provide images that are more landscape and it totally added landscapes to the, to the images instead of making them landscape in size, right? Or more horizontal. So I found that doing the, the four colon three aspect ratio works really well. And now what I have is those same four images, but instead of being square, they have a four to three aspect ratio. So we're definitely starting to hone in on something that I can use on my blog post. So then I really like the robot one every single time, the robot painting on an easel. So for the last query, what I did is I said, give me four variations on the AI robot graphic. So what it gave me is four robots with a predominant color of green in that four to three landscape aspect ratio. Um, that said, the robot it gave me on the iteration before, I like that one better, but now I have these five different robots painting on an easel concept that I can pick from that use the right colors and the right size for my needs. So in a few queries, I was able to generate a image that I'm actually gonna use as the cover image for the blog post for this podcast episode. What I used to do in the past was I go to stock photography, or you know, make my own image and I'm not a graphic artist, so they never look good. Um, and I think this is a, a way to quickly and easily get the point across that, hey, this episode's about AI and images. And, and I think that you can do the same in a lot of your graphics. Now, if you're gonna be doing like an infographic, we actually want numbers and stats and exactly precise things in there. AI's not gonna do that for you yet. But you can totally use AI for graphics that set a tone on what you're trying to do. So that's a graphic. Let's go to another example inside of ChatGPT. And in this one here, I have a client who has a charging solution. So like portable batteries for charging your phone and your laptop. And that got me this idea. And they have, we have all these industry vertical pages we're building, like for sports, for education, for outdoors. And we're actually having a, a challenge coming up with images for each one of these industries that we're targeting and all the marketing that we're putting together. So what I asked ChatGPT to do was give me a photorealistic image of campers by a campfire in the mountains 
with a lake in the background with a battery for charging laptops beside them. And what I got was uh, four images um, of exactly what we're talking about, but four different takes on it. And some of them are a little bit better than the others. And one of them, for whatever reason, there's like a Ferrari uh, car, a sports car, by the lake, which makes no sense in a camping thing. And some of these um, laptop battery units are, are absolutely massive. But each one is, is a little bit different. There's, there's one, for example, where the laptop battery image is in the forefront and in focus, and the campers are in the background and out of focus, and that's really nicely done. So in looking at these, though, it gave me what I asked for, which was, you know, campers, plural. So I said, no, this is too big. You know, like, it's, it's like 12 people sitting around a campfire, sometimes even more than that. So for the next thing, I said, make the campers a couple. And that's the only additional information I gave it. And what it gave me was four images of a couple and each in this situation each couple is a man and a woman sometimes it'll actually give you two men or two women so it understands a little bit about diversity um but also in this i got four images i got eight people but two of those images the people are facing away from me so then what i said is make the campers face the camera so now i've got four images and in the first one i've got a, a white couple in the second one, I've got a white couple. In the third one, I've got a white couple. And in the fourth one, I've got a mixed race couple. And this one, it actually says in the, in the prompt that ChatGPT created, photo of a diverse couple. Um, on the other photos, it doesn't say anything about the ethnicity or diversity of the people. So in looking at that, what I wanted to do, and they're all facing the camera now, which is nice, and if you look at the photorealism of them, none of these are, you know, photorealistic, as in I would mistake them for a photo close up. But a few of them are photorealistic enough that on a small enough size or from far enough away, you would actually think they're a photo. A couple of them are a little more graphics looking and you can totally tell it's, it's not photorealistic, but a couple would fool you on first blush, which I was absolutely amazed at this level of quality of, you know, photorealistic and air quotes imagery, because this was not available just a few months ago. So then in looking at this, I was, you know, thinking the batteries packs were too big. So I said, make the battery black, because my client's battery packs are all black, and a bit smaller. So the next round, it gave me all black battery cases, which is nice. And in the first one, it gave me two men. Even though the directions say photo of a male and female camper of diverse descents, right? I got two white men, all right? So, which is totally fine. But the, the point being is you are not in control of exactly what the AI is going to give you. You can give it directions. It's going to interpret it however it wants to. Um, and you're going to get directionally the way you want to go, but it's hard to control precision what it is that you get. In the second photo, I've got a man or a woman in a black case. Third photo, I've got a man or a woman in a black case. And in the fourth photo, I've got the man and woman with a little uh, ethnic uh, diversity and a black case. So in the next direction, what I said is diversify the people, right? And if I look at that one, my first image is uh, a diverse couple, um, diverse in ethnicity. The second one, white and maybe Hispanic, or it actually says Hispanic female. You know, she does look a bit Hispanic, so that's good. The fourth one, uh, I got a white camper and uh, a female is of indigenous descent. I can kind of see that. And the last one is interesting because it says a photo of a male camper of South Asian descent, and he's totally white. And a female camper of East African descent and to me, she looks more Asian. So like I said, you can give it very specific directions and it may or may not listen to you when it gives you back something. So then as I was looking at that, I'm like, all right, I've got a little more diversity to pick from. And then I said, all right, let's make the people 55 years old. So now I got four images and these people do look 55, maybe even you know a little bit older than that. In the first one, I've got you know a diverse couple in ethnicity, the second one looks very white and maybe Hispanic for the woman. Uh, the third one is diverse. It looks more cartoony though. It's less photorealistic. 
and which it has been all the way along. And then the last one, we've got a diverse couple, but but the adding age to them is, is totally realistic and, and kind of awesome, right? You compare the, the photos from before, and the only thing I said was, hey, now make them 55 years old, and you're like, boom, it just does it. It's really nicely done. And that, you know, for that example, I now have a ton of different photos that I could pick from and, you know, use whatever ones I want in whatever situations I want. And I might have to go into Photoshop and take out the, the battery it added and actually add my client's battery in. Um, but that, that's totally possible. But now I've got all these backgrounds that I can use in the situation that I'm looking for. So now I want to move on to another scenario that I did. And that is, I have a client who um, has coconut substrate that he sells for the bottom of, of your cage for your reptiles, like your snakes and your frogs. So I just ask for a symbol, um, give me a realistic photo of a ball python, which is a type of snake, on coconut substrate. And I was blown away with, you know, the photo realistic quality of these. You know, I think it's harder to do a photorealistic union than it is to do a photorealistic snake. Now, if you look at these, you can still tell they're computer generated. They're not that photorealistic, but the textures and the lighting and the shadowing, it's just unreal. I, I was blown away the first time I did this. And what it did is on the first one, I've got the snake and he looks incredible. And he's out a pile of coconuts. It's actually not, you know, chopped up coconut substrate, which is, is fine, right? Same thing with the second one. It's, it's like the same image for a different angle. The same thing with the third one. And the fourth one, uh, they all look a little bit different, but it gives you a place to start. And like I said, the photorealism of those is amazing. Now, my client actually has a logo of a specific type of ball python, and it's a blue eye leucistic ball python, which is basically a white snake with blue eyes. So what I said is, give me a realistic photo of a blue eyed leucistic ball python wrapped around a coconut, right? Because their logo we actually have a, a whole coconut and, and the snake wrapped around it, and that was done in Photoshop. Now, if I look at these images, once again, I was absolutely stunned by the quality and how realistic they looked. But in every single one of them, the ball python is wrapped inside, of, you know, he's, he's in a circle inside of a half cut open coconut, right? And I, I wanted it wrapped around a coconut. So then what I said is, all right, the snake should be wrapped around a whole coconut. And what it gave me back was even better looking images of a snake and a coconut, but none of them was the coconut whole. It's chopped in half and the snake is still inside of the coconut. So on this one here, I, I realized I was probably going to have to spend a little more time in figuring out how to build up and get Dolly to do what I want it to do in this situation. But the quality of graphics just totally blew me away. So now that I moved on from that, I have another client who has um, meats that they sell that they, they raise in the mountains of New Mexico, right? So I said, give me a photorealistic image of a herd of yaks. Ha yaks is one of the types of meat they have grazing in the New Mexico mountains. I just wanted to see what it would give me. Um, and it gave me, you know, totally what I asked for. You know, there's just th four different versions of yaks grazing on grass with mountains in the background, slightly different terrains in each one. The mountain peaks are all really steep and sharp, um, which, you know, maybe we could edit on that, but it's just amazing to see how it could do like a, it's a whole scenic painting um, in, in just a couple seconds time. And then I moved on from that and said, uh, cause on my website for Jade Puma, for my agency, one of my branding elements are different uh, stock photos that I have of store owners in front of their, you know, in front of their ware. So inside of their shop, you know, just looking at the camera and like happy, confident people kind of thing. You know, it's, it can probably understand my branding is if you work with Jade Bruma, this is going to be you. You're going to be a happy, successful e-commerce person. So I said, give me a photorealistic image of a happy owner of a shop in front of their wares. And what I found is if you ask for happy with Dolly 3, it is scary how happy these people are. I'll have another example in a little bit, but I've got four store owners and the beautiful thing here is I didn't ask for anything in diversity and what uh, chat GPT did was on the first image, it says, hey, give me a middle-aged Asian woman. On the second one, it said young African man. 
The third one, it's a Hispanic woman. And the fourth one was an elderly Caucasian man. So chat GPT is automatically asking Dolly three to give diverse images. In each of the images, I've got this person standing in front of their shop. Um, and on a couple of the, uh, the smiles for them happy, their, their smiles are just a little bit too big, um, kind of thing, but still absolutely fantastic. Cause you can do something, you know, you probably be more specific with what types of merchants. So let's say you were targeting, um, in an e-commerce agency targeting just bicycle shops, you could ask it for, you know, five or six different people in their bicycle shop. And you could show that diversity of bike shops, but consistency that they're, they're all bike shops kind of thing. So then the next thing I said is make the images wider so they can be used as banner images. And it gave me basically no change, right? So yeah, this is where I was learning. I got to tell it, I want a specific aspect ratio for it to, you know, do that because just saying make it wider did, didn't change anything. And then I, I even went extreme and I said, make the images three times as wide as they are tall. And it, it just didn't listen to me. Um, but it, when it did that, it did some really weird things on um, focus. Like like the image I'm looking at right now is of the man, um, and he's it's it stretched out into the depth. There's a lot more depth to these. So somehow by saying I want it, you know, three times wider, it, it gave up more depth to the images and, and a different view on it than it had done before. So I think it's one of those things, as you keep playing with it, you'll see the cause and effect of what you ask for and what it gives you. So then I have another client who um, is big on Easter candy and we're building out their Easter candy uh, landing page. And I said, give me a photorealistic image of kids on Easter with a happy family. And this one here, happy is just way, way too happy. Um, and, and the first image, there's a family and the three guys. So there's three women, three guys and four kids. The three guys look like triplets, right? They're, and everybody is super white in this photo. Um, and they're very, very happy. In the second one, I now have uh, three women, two men and four kids. And you know, they're, they're also really kind of happy, but you know, it's, it's really, there's a lot of detail in all of these. It's amazing how much detail. You, this one's taken indoors. There's Easter decorations all over the place and rabbits and eggs and all that kind of stuff. In the third one, this was taken outside. You know, there's tons of people on this image also. Um, ironically, the image is of someone taking a photo of the scene, right? And the camera, the image in the camera is not the image you see. So, you know, that little level of detail, they were kind of missing, but there's a ton of detail in this one also that's just absolutely extraordinarily amazing. Um, and the last one, it's, uh, let me just give you uh, the text here. So what uh, ChatGPT came up with for the prompt is realistic photograph capturing the essence of Easter with a family, children laughing and running with Easter baskets, parents sharing a moment and a backdrop of spring flowers and bright skies. And it's just absolutely over the top um, with detail. Um, but interestingly on this one, there's a uh, two parrots, man or woman, and there's three kids, two boys and a girl the girl is in dad's arms. There's a whole bunch of people in the background also, but in the forefront are these five people, but the mom is totally messed up by AI. So the mom, we can see the full mom, you know, her, her whole body, she's only got one leg, right? And maybe the other legs behind her because they're all running. But in between the full mom and the full dad, underneath the girl, there's another mom's half body with two legs. So. You know, this image would be totally unusable because somehow they just totally messed up. And that does happen, you know, and especially with human bodies because they're really hard. And like I've seen before with the snake images that I was looking at, the snakes were just extraordinarily um, detailed and accurate. And part of that is because, you know, a snake's body is not as complex as a human. And the other part of it is we all know human bodies better than snake bodies. So maybe their mouth, you know, the snake's mouth was inaccurate, but I don't know that because I don't know snakes. But I can look at this one and go, well, that one's only got one leg. That's a mistake, right? And you just, you just eerie when you look at it. So then after I got all these really happy people, I said, can you make them a little less happy? And the first image I got, 
um, they're a lot less happy. In fact, they're almost sad. And all their hands are down. It, it's, it's, so you, you have to be gentle in, in the um, directions that you give it. And the instructions for the image say, photorealistic image of a diverse family gathered in a garden during Easter with kids searching for Easter eggs with mild enthusiasm, parents observing calmly, and a modestly decorated Easter basket nearby. So you could easily tweak those words of mild enthusiasm and parents observing calmly uh, to increase their, their excitement a little bit. In the second image, which is the indoor one, I was saying there was a lot of detail before, and every time you do a new image, but it's a redraw of what the previous one was. So it doesn't start from the previous one, it just starts with the same instructions as the previous one, but ends up with a different result because it's redrawing it every time. And in this one, I've now got what looks like four grandparents, where before there, there was also four, but one is man one and a woman is a couple, and the other two are two men as a couple. And the interesting thing about the two men and a couple, they're sitting very oddly, like one is almost on the lap of the other, and between the two of them, there's only three legs. So AI might have lost a leg somewhere along the way. The rest of the image, though, there, there's a lot going on in this image, just like on the last one. And then one of the other images it gave me, uh, the photorealism on this one was much improved over the other ones. There's even in the foreground that people are in focus, in the background they're less in focus. And they even put a little bunny um, in the Easter basket and it looks like a real rabbit, you know? And the one where they were running through the woods all crazy or running through the fields all crazy with mom having, you know, one leg, that image looks a lot better. Um, but there's also a person in the background you know, and he looks to be like a 12 year old boy and he's holding two six year old girls, one stacked on the other. So it's, it's not a realistic pose there. Um, but really nicely done. This one's a little bit more surreal. Um, but if that's the tone you're going for, that's great. And what you can do in chat GPT, and you saw me do this on the robot one of the uh, Jade Puma graphic before, is if you like one of the images, you can describe which one you like and say, you know, let's focus on this one and do this with it. And it'll give you four versions on that. And then for the next uh, image, I was actually doing a Halloween email campaign. And all I said was, give me a photorealistic image for Halloween. And it gave me four really awesome images. Um, they are very Halloween-y. There, there's no mistaking that yeah, this is setting the tone that this is a Halloween email campaign. And I actually used one of the images. So I just did one query, was totally happy with what I got, used one of the images and put it in the email. So, you know, that took me like five minutes or less um, from doing the query to, to chat GPT to actually adding the, e the image to Clavio in the email campaign that I was building, which is much less time than to even go look in stock photography sites for what you're looking for. And the last example I wanna give with chat GPT and Dolly 3 is for making of a logo. So right now I'm developing a uh, marketing course for new Shopify store owners. And in that course, I'm using an example of Yo-Yo Wizard as my demo company as we build out the branding for the course. So what I said to ChatGPT is, give me a logo for Yo-Yo Wizard, an e-commerce store that sells yo-yos. And it gave me three of them, right? Um, and each one has like a wizard hat. Not all of them have a wizard hat, but most have a wizard hat um, or a wizard silhouette and a yo-yo. Um, and you know, it's, it's a place to start. So then I said, make them more landscapes. So I was trying to get wider images. And in this case, it actually did make them more landscape. Uh, but one of the images, which was a logo before, is now a logo on a card in somebody's hand, which, you know, I don't need that. I just need a flat logo kind of thing. Um, and what I realized as I started going through these examples is because you have so little control over the consistency of things, it's really hard to just say, now tweak this and tweak that. So I said, you know, the one that I liked, I said, let's go deeper with the one with the wizard hat on the yo-yo. So then it gave me four versions of that. So I got four different looking wizard hats um, with yo-yos or things that sort of look like yo-yos around them. Um, but then it just became really hard from there to um, to zone in on on what I really wanted. So then I said, let's simplify it a little bit because there's a lot of detail in them. And I don't think logos should have a lot of detail. So then it simplified them a little too much. And I said, not that simple. And it simplified them 
a little less. But for some reason, it was giving them all an outdoor theme. And I think that's because I said the word landscape. I wanted landscape as in an aspect ratio or size of the image, but it was interpreting that as let's throw in some outdoor imagery in them. So I said, get rid of the outdoors, rivers, and trees concept. And it totally did not listen to me. It gave me new versions and they were still outdoors and trees and rivers. Um, and I said, some of these still have outdoor elements and it still did not listen to me. So in that case, I would, you know, probably start all over again with a new context. There's no history in chat GPT that it's leaning upon. So that is some really good examples of using chat GPT and Dolly three to make images. I think for things like blog article headers, um, navigational elements, emails, you know, you can do a lot with graphics and semi photorealistic images from these tools. If you're doing, you know, product photography, navigational elements with, you know, big banners, you're probably still going to be doing that the traditional way you've always done it. But you can start using AI for these other lower resolution and much more higher frequency needs for creation of content uh, than you have in the past. So now let's switch gears away from ChatGPT and talk about AI inside of Photoshop. So Photoshop has been putting AI inside of their tools for a little bit of time now under beta. And now that's finally launched. And it's just amazing what you can do. So I'm going to show in a bunch of stock photos that I downloaded from Unsplash. So the concepts of things you can do and things that I've been doing regularly now. And the beautiful thing with the AI in Photoshop is you're starting with your photo. So you're not asking AI to generate a scene and to come up with ideas. You're going to start with your photo and then you're going to have the AI in Photoshop improve upon that photo for your needs. And like one of the first things that I use this for is in today's world, we have a lot of portrait photos taken by phones. And I like my imagery in a lot of situations to be square when we're doing you know, product photos or collection photos. Or for banners, we might also make them more landscape. So it's really hard to take a portrait photo and use it in a landscape banner. And my favorite feature right now in AI on Photoshop is to create a banner image from a portrait one. So on my screen right now in Photoshop, I've got this landscape image, I got this mountain with a house in front of it. And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna increase the cropping. So I'm gonna make the, the image wider. And I'm gonna tell Photoshop to generate an expanded image from this. And I'm gonna click the OK button. It's gonna take a second to do it. It's thinking, and now it's generating. And now the results are in. And just like in chat, GPT, where it gives me four options for me to choose from, what Photoshop is doing is giving me three options. So here's the default one. And I had this mountain, and I expanded it, and it just took the slopes of it going on both sides and just extended it out. It's, it's just amazing. Uh, if I look at the second options, I get to look through my three options to go, well, which one do I like the best? Um, the second one I like a little bit more because off to the left, there's a little less fog so I can see more of the details. And if I look at the third one, um, I don't like it as much. I, I like the second one for whatever reason, but I get to pick the one I like. Um, and then you know, I can go back and change if I want to change my mind to any of this. And what Photoshop does, it's called a non-destructive process. So right now, if I don't like any of these, I can just delete the layer because it adds a layer for each of the ones that you get to pick from. And I can turn that layer off, see what the original photo looked like. I can turn that layer back on and look at the improvements and judge whether I like what the AI has done or not. But that's not even close to all you can do inside of Photoshop. So in this image, I've got a house and all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select near that house I'm going to make a selection box and it brings up a, men a menu item called generative fill. And I'm going to say that I want a log cabin instead. So I've drawn a box around the house and I'm saying, let's change this to a log cabin. And the AI is going to generate three options for me to choose from. So now that it's done, I can see this, this really rustic looking log cabin. I got three options and they all look pretty rustic. So maybe what I want to do 
is instead of it being a log cabin, maybe I want it to be a modern glass house. Now, as it's generating my three new options, it's gonna keep my three log cabin options in this layer. So this layer is now gonna give me six options that I can choose from, or I can just get rid of that layer and, and, and take none of them and keep the original house that was there. So there's glass house number one, two, and three. I like three the best, but maybe we wanna go with a sleek concrete house with large windows. So now it's gonna generate the sleek concrete house with large windows, give me three options for that. So now I'm gonna have a total of nine options that I can look at and decide what house I want to be there. I see the three options. I'm actually liking that one, maybe that one. I'm still going back to the glass house one that I had before. I'm gonna leave it at that. Um, so you can take an object and replace it. You can also delete objects. So next to my house, I have a grove of trees. So I'm just gonna draw a box around the grove of trees and I'm going to just hit the delete button. I have this grove of trees next to the house that I wanna get rid of. So I'm just gonna select, draw a box around the trees and I'm gonna hit the delete button. And I want it to do a content aware deletion. So what it's gonna do, it's gonna look at the content around the image, right? What, what the textures, the colors and all that kind of stuff and try to fill in the best it can. Now sometimes, this doesn't work well when you've got an image right next to it, like of the house. And that's what you see right there is it's not working that well. So I'm going to undo that one because it didn't work that well. And that's because there's a house right next to it. So now when you got to play with a little bit in Photoshop, but here's another fun one that, that I've done in it. So now I've got this, this field in the background and I'm just going to put a box around that. And I don't even have to use the box, right? I can use the lasso tool if I want to and go along the ridge line of the, the field instead of it being a square box. And I can say, uh, add sheep grazing. And it's gonna add some sheep to the hillside for me. And I'll be able to look at it and, you know, I'll, I'll have three options and I can pick the one that I like and keep the, that one. So now I have three different sheep to choose from. I've got this one, I don't like it, it looks cut off on one side. Second one, that one looks a little bit better, but I've got some issues in it also. And the third one looks a little bit better. It's got smaller sheep, which is more realistic, um, given the, the distance away that I pick for the field. So I'm gonna keep that one. I'm gonna go on to another image. And in this image, I've got a green sneaker on a background of green leafy shrubs, it looks like. So what I'm gonna do in Photoshop first is I'm gonna pick the object selection tool and just highlight the sneaker. And it's automatically gonna select the sneaker. Even though the sneaker's got a lot of green and it's got a camo look, it can distinguish between what's the sneaker and what's the shrubbery background behind it. So now that it's automatically selected that, I'm just gonna hit delete. And we're gonna do the content aware fill. And sometimes this works really well, sometimes it doesn't. Uh, it all depends on you know how much information the image has. So there we go. It, and it's, it's left the, uh, the shrubs that, you know, it's added to where the sneaker was a little bit darker than the other part of the shrubbery is. If I turn off the, uh, yeah, you really can't tell that though when you turn off the selection tool. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna add a new object by hitting a selection box and I'm just gonna say tennis ball. And it gives me three different tennis balls to pick from. Uh, interestingly, one of them, yeah, one of them has some leaves and kind of in front of it, giving it even a more realistic look. Um, the highlights of it are a little too high, um, but I've got three options to choose from there, and it's kind of nice. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw another box. And what I've learned is the size of the box you draw is important to make sure that the image that's being added isn't too big or too small for the scene that you're putting it into. Um, and on this one here, I'm just gonna say football. Now Adobe as an American company is probably gonna give me an American football versus a, what I would call a soccer ball, but we'll see. And I've got a pretty good looking football there. It gave me a brown one, it gave me a white one and another brown one. Well, that's nice. That is really nice. I'm, I'm just totally impressed with this. So let's move on to another 
image. And I'm just trying to give you ideas of what you can do inside of Photoshop's AI tools and where the limits are and, and a little bit of the tips and tricks that I've learned. So on this one here, I've got a young man sitting on steps outdoors. And this is a portrait image. And let's just say I want to make it square or I want to make it, you know, even, you know, more landscape than that. So what I'm going to do is in the crop tool, I'm going to add some width to both sides till it's about what I think is square. And we're just going to do a generative expand. And, you know, the steps that he's on are at kind of an angle. So I want to see how good it does with the the angle of the steps. Oh, that is stunning. I, I had done this one before, and, and the steps did not stay as straight as they do on this one. Uh, this is just unbelievably good quality. I can't tell at all in looking at it right now where the added part started. And sometimes you can see a little bit of a seam. This just looks really, really good. So my next image, I have mountains, silhouette of a mountain with golden sunsetty sky behind it. And all I'm going to do is just be a little bit silly and say, I want a UFO in the sky. And my first UFO doesn't look that good. Second one's better because it, it takes the glow from the sky. Um, and the third one is very silhouette also, but not bad. And I can have it generate three more to see if there's a better options that it gives me. And now I've got six options to choose from. Um, and you know, they're all, they're kind of similar because it's concept of UFO, UFO is kind of locked on one thing, but there's differences in colors and lights. And, and, and this is the one I like, and, and I would keep that one. Now we're going to move on to another image. And in this one, once again, I have a mountain that's kind of silhouetted and I've got a blue sky behind this one. And in this one, I just feel like I want to see the moon rising. So I'm going to just draw a square box over by the mountain. And I'm just going to say moon. My first moon does not look good. My second moon looks awesome. It looks like our moon. And what it did is it gave me three different moons, not Earth's moon. The second one is Earth's moon, and that looks really good. Now, I wonder what would happen if I said, well, instead of the moon, I want Jupiter. Because maybe we're on a moon of Jupiter when uh, this photo was taken. I don't know. Uh, it, it gave me some weird shark-looking spaceship. I mean, this is to be the Jupiter from uh, Lost in Space. It gave me a bird. And the third one is sort of like Jupiter, but with Saturn rings and a couple moons. So we'd have to work on that one a little bit. And then just to show you on the uh, expanding the size of the image, because we have this portrait image, let's take this one and make it a landscape also and see what it gives us. These generative, uh, these generative expands on images are just absolutely amazing. And this is the one that I use the most in stuff that we do taking our portrait photos and making them square or landscape, depending on the use that we're trying to get out of them. Uh, this one here is just another example of that. I got three different versions. They all look pretty good. So my next image is, looks like a state capitol building. And the sky in this one is really white and, or gray and, and hazy. So what I'm gonna do for this one is I'm gonna go to the selection uh, menu and just pick sky. And I'm gonna let Adobe's AI pick what it thinks the sky is. And in this image, there's a state capitol and trees on both sides of the photo. So, and there it's picked the sky, it looks like it's done a pretty good job. And what I'm gonna do for generative fill is I'm just gonna say blue sky. Because this image with the, the current sky is, is really bland and boring. It's not bright, it's not happy. I want to see if we can use AI to take this photo if it's the only one I've got and make it a little more appealing. So in version number one, I still have clouds, but I can see some blue in that sky. It's, it's a bit brighter. And I think it did that because around the trees, it's hard to fill in all the blue. Not really sure. Second one, no improvement at all. It actually gave me more branches out of the trees. It's, it second was absolutely awful the more I look at it. And the third one, uh, I have a blue skyscraper, I think, behind it. So only one did it give me a blue sky. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to say blue sunny sky. See if that helps. 
See if it'll give me three more versions. Well, the first one it gave me with the blue is a lot better than what was there before. It's a little brighter of a day in that one. Still, I would not use that image, you know, in a high resolution on like a banner, but you could totally use it in a smaller thumbnail or in an email. Blue Sunny Sky 1 took the top of my State Capitol Dome off, but the sky part of it looks good. 2 looks good also. And 3, it's adding some funky rooftop to the, the back of the State Capitol that wasn't there before. Um, so and this is a complex picture with the trees and the State Capitol. So it's trying, but you'd have to play with it a little bit to get it to, to be good enough to, to use. Now the last image I have is just of a beach and some rocky cliffs near the beach and an ocean. So the first thing I want to do here is just draw a box and let's put in a sailboat because the ocean's kind of blank right now. So I'm just gonna say sailboat and I've got three versions of a sailboat. First one isn't bad, second one's not bad, and then the third one's not bad. So those are all nicely done. I'm gonna draw another box on the cliffs and I'm just gonna say I want a two hikers. Just to show you how we can add content in different areas. So my first image of two hikers looks really good. My second image, I've got three hikers and they're all wearing bright red so they look like they're in a hiking team. And it gave me three, not two. And my last one is a little bit too blurry, but of those, one of them is absolutely fantastic. So now what, what I've done is I've added a couple elements to this photo, but I can also delete elements. Uh, I've got the swimmer in the water that I want to get rid of. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the object selection tool and see if I can pick that person. Sometimes when it's that small, you can't, but it looks like I can. I'm going to delete it with a content aware uh, deletion. So it should just take that person out. And if I uh, show the full screen there, yep, they're gone. That looks nice. Um, we could also, you know, get rid of this person on the beach, let's say. And if I show that full screen. Um, and this one here, you can see there's a little bit of an outline around it. Um, so if that happens, sometimes you just draw a box around that whole thing or the lasso and just have it do a content aware fill of that area again and see if that and that helps a lot so you can see there in this image we've added a couple elements that were you know kind of lacking life and we where it was too crowded we deleted a couple elements also and this is how you can do the same thing with your photography let's say you've got a great um outdoor photo shoot that you're doing but there was some annoying person in the background wearing a clown suit and, the, and you didn't want that in your photos at all you could go into photoshop and just take that person out and keep the great photo that you spent so much time and energy creating. So that is an overview of what you can do with AI and image creation and editing in today's world, right? And this is only going to continue to get better. All the stuff I've shown you, I could not have done, you know, six months ago, a year ago, because the tools weren't available, but now they are. Now, both Photoshop is a paid service and I'm on chat GPT Pro, which is a paid service. So you're not getting these tools for free, but they are, I think, worth the money if you're gonna be using them quite often. So go ahead and start using these in your content creation, especially for your emails and your blog articles. And as they get better, I, I'm, I think we're quickly gonna be amazed in just a year or two's time what we can do with these tools. Like what I'm looking forward to is taking your transparent background photo of your product uploading that and say, now give this to me in these different contexts with this type of background and that type of background. I don't think we're that far off from stuff that, you know, 20 years ago was science fiction, but it's going to be our near future pretty soon. So trying tools out and thanks for listening. You've been listening to the Shopify Solutions Podcast with Scott Austin. This podcast is brought to you by Jade Puma, a Shopify focused agency located in San Diego, California. If you like what you heard, please leave a review and subscribe on iTunes or wherever you get your podcasts.